Victorium, long before we would get uh, any significant decomposition, chemical breakage of the acetone molecules. But something quite different happens in the presence of a um, hot copper disk, in this case provided by Mr. Lincoln. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clamp this close to the surface of the acetone. And if we could have the lights down a bit, I think you can see, and maybe you can, if we could have the lights quite far down so that the people in the audience can, can see the penny directly. Because I think if we turn off these lights, you'll actually, even from the back of the auditorium, be able to see the penny glowing. Is it possible to go completely out on the lights? Now, we tried this last night, and uh, although we don't have an hour to sit and stare at this, I will tell you that that penny will continue to glow that orange hot color for uh, an entire hour as the acetone is decomposed. So let's look, then, at the reaction that's involved, if we could now have the uh, video off and go back to the, to the slides. In the presence of this me metallic copper surface, the acetone molecules land on the copper surface, and uh, that speeds up their breaking apart into two other organic molecules, this ketene and methane. Methane you know about. This is just a uh, heating gas that's used if you have a forced air furnace in your house. This is natural gas. And then in the presence of oxygen from the air, the, a combustion reaction takes place where these small organic molecules burn to produce carbon dioxide and water and, of course, heat, which in turn keeps the copper catalyst hot, which allows it to continue participating in the breaking down of the uh, acetone. So that's one type of chemical catalysis that we can use as a model system for biochemical catalysis, the providing of a surface that has the right spacing of copper atoms to encourage the molecules uh, of, in this case, acetone, to decompose in a very specific way. The uh, next demo, so let's think about this now in terms of the principles of catalysis. And I have a few of them mentioned on uh, the board here. First of all, a catalyst is something that speeds up a chemical reaction. Or if it's a biochemical catalyst, it speeds up a chemical reaction that's important for a living cell. It does that not simply by speeding up the reaction in the way that it would occur uncatalyzed, but by providing a new pathway for the reaction to occur. In the case of Mr. Lincoln uh, and the decomposition of the acetone, it was by providing a surface that the uh, molecules of acetone could sit down with in and their chemical bonds be destabilized in a way that led to decomposition. The catalyst participates only transiently in the reaction, it's restored in its original form afterwards. And this can also be seen uh, with the copper catalyst because if we look at this penny after it's th through with the reaction, we'll notice that it, the copper is still there. There's been no decomposition of the penny. It's not been eaten away at its edges. If you were to weigh it before and after, you'd see that the copper content was still there. Uh, again, providing a demonstration that the catalyst is participating only transiently. I'd like to do another demonstration, a little bit more dramatic one, of uh, catalysis that involves this time soluble metal ions rather than a metallic surface. And this next demonstration uh, is, has to do with the oxidation of tartrate 
into uh, an oxalate product. And before I show you that reaction on the board, I think we should do the demonstration. And at this point, I would like to have, again, a couple of volunteers, uh, somebody who's close to the... Uh, could, could you come up? And um, yes, please. For, there, second from the end. And if you would uh, put on... Again, we always like to stress safety here, so if you would put on a lab coat... We have Sarah and Rizwan. Rizwan. Okay, and um, we're going to start out now by just pouring this. Oh, no, 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 is is correct. Thank you. Uh, we're not going to pour that in. We're going to add hydrogen peroxide. And uh, again, if you could put, we we forgot the safety goggles here. We have to. We have to all be appropriately dressed for this, um, for this reaction. So, Sarah, if you could pour the hydrogen peroxide uh, into that beaker and just, just put the entire contents uh, into the tartrate. Just pour it in, and there's a stir bar there, and you can give it a little stir. And this uh, oxidation reaction is accompanied by the evolution of a gas. Now, what do you see? Sarah, tell us, what's your observation of the system? It's steaming. Is there a very vigorous reaction? No. No, very little is happening. The steam is because we started out with a hot solution. So what we need to speed this reaction up so that we don't have to all sit here for several hours waiting for this oxidation to take place is a what? Catalyst. So Rizwan, why don't you add the catalyst, which is that copper chloride solution, and again, you can just dump that um, directly in. You can see, note the color. It's a pretty pink color. And now this evolution of the gas, which is accompanying the uh, oxidation reaction, is quite visible. And what else do you notice? What happened to the color? It's changed from pink to what would you call that? Kind of dark brown. Yeah, brownish or almost, I think it has a little bit of a greenish tinge. The reaction rate has been accelerated so much that we can be patient enough to actually wait for the uh, decomposition to be complete. And what's happening to the color now? It's turned red. It's turned back to that same sort of uh, uh, burgundy or, or dark pink color that the catalyst had Originally. Okay, very good. If you, let's give uh, Sarah and Rizwan a hand. <laughs> let's look then at the chemistry that took place. The tartrate molecule you can see has four carbon atoms decorated with oxygens at very position, various positions. And although I'm not going to talk about the mechanism of this uh, oxidation that takes place in the presence of hydrogen peroxide in detail, I think you can see that if you would take this molecule and cut it down the middle, you would have two products, each of which would contain two carbon atoms. And so, in fact, it is that carbon-carbon bond that is broken during this oxidation reaction. The other uh, products of the reaction are molecular oxygen and carbon dioxide, which accounts for the bubbling that we saw in the solution. And this is a very nice, the color change gives a beautiful illustration of one of the principles of catalysis, which has to do with this transient participation and then restoration of the catalyst in its original form at the end of the reaction. So the cobalt metal ions in solution uh, the, are in solution, and the tartrate uh, which you can see has a negative charge. The cobalt ion would have a positive charge. They interact with each other. The uh, tartrate wraps itself around 